Now, before we dive into this newest episode of NFL Questions from Subs, I got to give a special shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons and the newest Team Keep It Clean patrons. It's Alfonso, uh, Michael J, JT Ball So Hard, and JT The Raven. And to start us off, we got the first question coming from one of the newest patrons, JT uh, The Raven. And I appreciate you being a patron. Actually, excuse me, JTD The Raven. I said, hey, what's up, Engraven? Finally became a patron. I watch videos every day. Just wanted to know, who do you think will be starting uh, at running back in week one? Gus Edwards or J.K. Dobbins? Ooh, and that's a good question. Um, we have seen the clips uh, when training camp had first started. I haven't seen any since. But we saw the clips uh, from, the, I think, the first day of training camp. But it was like, oh, J.K. Dobbins, he was talking to John Harbaugh. J.K. Dobbins was running around. He's trying to get on the field. He's trying to start training camp. He's trying to be activated off the physically unable to perform list. So I think that he'll be back, not necessarily any day now. But I think if I had to choose between the two, I would definitely pick J.K. Dobbins. Because we haven't even seen Gus Edwards out there. We haven't seen him at all. So that kind of makes me wonder, like, ooh, is and, and and especially with the um the they, they already put him as um questionable for week one. And when they did that, it was like a, a month and a half before the game, and I'm like thinking like what training camp hadn't even started yet. We hadn't even been through preseason. Definitely not even close to week one, but they had already declared Gus Edwards questionable. So I'm like, ooh. Yeah, that, that doesn't, all that adds up to not really sounding hopeful for Gus Edwards uh, being ready by the start of the season. But, I mean, it's still to be determined, but we haven't seen him at all. We've seen Ronnie Stanley out there, standing on the sidelines and stuff, but I haven't seen Gus Edwards at all. Saw Marcus Peters, like, the first, the first day we went there to the training camp, and that was on Thursday, this past Thursday. Oh, so a week ago. Uh, we saw Marcus Peters even called out AMP. He did a little point because he had a hoodie. That's that's the only reason I knew it was Marcus Peters because he had a little hoodie on. And the way that Marcus Peters has his hoodies is just like nobody else that has a hoodies like that. Um, but we for Gus Edwards we haven't seen him at all, not at all. Uh, so um, I, I would have to go with uh, a, a J.K. Dobbins. I think J.K. Dobbins has the highest chance of being ready by week one. And even if it's not week one, then he has the highest chance of being ready earlier. Um, and then with, uh, with J.K. Dobbins, and really with Gus Edwards, really seems like with everybody, what the Ravens are doing this year, they're being extra cautious. They're being extra cautious because it seems like they have learned their lesson from years past uh, and especially last year. Um, but they learned their lesson when it comes to rushing guys back. Ravens seem like they are going to be extra prepared uh, when it comes to bringing guys back from injury. And that's a good thing. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it. How to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens. Like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. Next set of questions also came from another patron, Nazarene, and I appreciate you too. And actually, I got to go back because he sent a question that I had accidentally skipped. Uh, he said, what's good, bro? Have you seen what another anonymous defensive coordinator said about Patrick Mahomes? He said, take his first read away. What does he do? He runs, he scrambles, and he plays street ball. Uh, the anonymous defensive play caller on Patrick Mahomes via The Athletic. And yeah, these these anonymous guys, I mean, I, I say it like this. They, um, if, if you're going to be anonymous, then you must not really be that confident in what you're saying. Because if you were that confident in what you were saying, then stand by it. And the fact that they, uh, they anonymously have been talking about Lamar Jackson, Patrick Mahomes. But Patrick Mahomes and Lamar Jackson, their success is not anonymous. <laughs> And the, the success that their teams have had because of them is not anonymous. So, yeah, that's that. So, anyway, uh, his next question. He said, oh, what's good, big homie? Yeah, I just got done watching a video about Odell Beckham Jr. He's one of my favorite players, minus his time in Cleveland. Ill. But, anyway, I don't really want him or Will Fuller on our team. Okay. DK is dead to me. Uh, and so is Shorty from the Niners. Oh, wow. He ain't even addressed Debo by name. 
He said, so is Shorty from the night. Anyway, nevertheless, do you and the fans remember when we were trying to get Adam Thielen during the Ngakwe trade? Yeah, I, I do remember that. Um, I do. Uh, but Vikings are like, uh -uh, nope. No thanks. But uh, he said, Justin Jefferson believes he will get more touches this year. More than Cooper Cup and more than Devontae Adams. Since Justin Jefferson has been in the league, Thielen has been getting less and less touches. That's the same thing that happened when Stephon Diggs got drafted. I personally low-key think Ravens might still be li liking to acquire him. That would be a, a sleeper that um haven't really heard much about this year. Uh, Adam Thielen. But who who are Vikings other receivers? Like, I feel like if you remove Adam Thielen from the Vikings, then uh, that puts more pressure on Justin Jefferson and more attention on Justin Jefferson. And I mean, he's going to get the attention regardless, but that puts even more attention on him. Um, so, I mean, we'll see. He said, do you and the fans like Adam Thielen in a new purple uniform? Uh, so I see what you did there because he's already wearing purple. Thielen can block and he has hands. Need a veteran in the locker room that is a dog at receiver? Boom. He's the one. Thanks for being consistent. Keep up the good work. Your channel has grown on me heavy. Oh, appreciate it. <laughs> sound, sound like early on. You <laughs> wasn't really feeling it, but again, that's okay. That's okay. Because that reminds me of what we always talk about. Not, every, not everything is for everybody. And you, you have, uh, if you initially try something out, whether it's food, whether it's a YouTube channel, whether it's this pair of shoes, whether it's a video game, whether it's a TV show, whether it's a movie, whatever it might be, you initially try something out and you, you don't like it, you could be like, all right, nope, not trying it again. It ain't for me. But then if you decide, you know what, I'm going to give it another shot. Who knows? Hey, it, it could grow on you. That's what happened to me with Chipotle. Uh, he also said, oh, and Adam Thielen is a wide receiver 1B. His situation with uh, Justin Jefferson is like Anquan Bolden and Larry Legends. Larry Fitzgerald he's talking about. Anquan Bolden was a wide receiver 1B, while Justin Jefferson, Stephon Diggs, and Larry Fitzgerald are wide receiver 1A. Adam Thielen's numbers don't lie. He has the yards, the touchdowns, and the eye test that shows he's elite. Ooh, that boy called him elite. Elite. Um, yeah, that will certainly be a, a sleeper. If they did circle back around... To Adam Thielen. And, and you know they like uh, Royal Ravens. They come back around for people that they really, really liked. It's, it's happened multiple times, and it's going to happen in the future, too. Like Justin Houston. When Justin Houston first uh, became a free agent a couple years back, Ravens really wanted him. They tried to get him, but he ended up going to the Colts. What happened last year? Well, you know the rest of the story. Um, with uh, Yannick Ngakwe. When the Jaguars were first trying to trade him, the Ravens were like, mm, ooh, we like that guy. Didn't work out. They didn't get him. What happened? He went to the Vikings, and then the Ravens were like, ah, this is our opportunity. This is our chance. And they did it. And you know what? Honestly, a lot of times I forget about that trade. Um, so Ravens, they are known to, to, to circle back around. So if they were to get Adam Thielen, um, I, I wouldn't be mad at that. I wouldn't be mad at that because, yeah, a receiver with some good hands, he's a little older, a little older. Not, like, super old. Um, that'd, be, that'd be straight. Solid hands. As far as being explosive, because that's what I would want. Somebody who, a uh, big body, outside receiver, explosive guy. Um, Adam Thielen, he, he would be a, a solid addition, though. He would um, give us a, a proven guy. Like you said, got good hands, um, got experience in the league, uh, and could help make the Ravens just add another shorthanded receiver to the guys that they have. Um, would he really push them over the top like that? I think he'll certainly help. He'll certainly help. Um, hmm. it, it's, it's a really tricky one for me, man. Uh Oof, it's, it's a really tricky one for me Because I know he is a red zone monster So that's a beautiful thing Because um, it would just give Lamar yet another target In the red zone Seem like obviously Mark Andrews is that Him and Rashad Bateman Their connection is improving every day uh, And to add Adam Thielen to, to that Especially in the red zone Because uh, the red zone is where Ravens struggle a lot they, they, they struggle a lot From the 20 to the 20 Hey, we get them yards, baby But then inside the 20 It's like, oof Things can start to get a little bit ugly and questionable. Um, 
So I, I, w- I wouldn't mind if they got Adam Thielen. He wouldn't be at the top of my list. But if they got Adam Thielen, I'd be, I'd be okay with it. Next question came from my guy Knox. He said, what's good, Engraven? I hope you and the fam are good. Is it weird that I think our passing game will be better without Hollywood? Uh, when I was watching Rashad, Devin, Prochet, and Tyler's highlights, I thought about the fact that when Hollywood touches the ball, the play is over. Whether it be a touchdown or a 10-yard pass, he wouldn't fight for extra yards. All of our receivers now play physical and always looking for yak yards uh, and that we just didn't get from Hollywood. Now, with that, because I know I was just talking to one of my guys about this or oh, in the comment section a couple days ago. And yeah, with Hollywood, with the, uh, the yak, it, it was up and down. If Lamar hit Hollywood in stride or he caught it in stride, then he could, again, easily run for a lot of yak yards. But um, if it's like a comeback route or something or a slant and he got to create yak yards, that's where it would get a little bit trickier. Um, because, yeah, there will be a lot of times where he would just run out of bounds. Uh, he would slide to the ground, um, and it would be just the yak yards just wouldn't be there like that. Um, there were some games like I think it was in the Colts game where he, he brought that stiff arm out. I was like, okay, let's go. Uh, but we just would have wanted to see more of that, um, and it could be him just second guessing himself, second guessing his body, uh, just him wanting to try to preserve his body as much as possible, especially him being a smaller, uh, sh- shorter wide receiver. Um, I think that had a lot to do with it. But, yeah, not you, you you nailed it on the head. Rashad Bateman was a yak monster from what we saw from him last year. Um, James Prochet, he going to fight for it. Devin DuVernay, a um, little pit bull Devin DuVernay, he going to fight for it too. Tylen Wallace as well. Um, so, yeah, that, that will make a big difference um, with just the offense, period, because that's big. Those extra two, three yards – Sometimes it could be extra two, three yards. Sometimes it could be extra eight, nine yards. It like, because you never know how a receiver is going to stumble or fall forward and whatnot. How they're going to break a tackle and then catch their balance and just keep on going. You just never know because you, you don't see crazy stuff happen in the NFL. So that yak will make a big difference. Um, now, with what you were talking about, uh, when, when you first mentioned better without Hollywood, um, I uh I wasn't even thinking about the yak. That is a big part, but I was just thinking about um Lamar having L- Lamar not having some. Not to say he's not cool with the receivers, because I ain't saying that. But him not having like one of his best friends at the wide receiver position. Uh, so there's less loyalty there. So with Hollywood gone, there's less loyalty to the receivers. So it's like, all right, yeah, I, I am gonna look around a little bit more. Because he, he obviously trusted Hollywood. He gave Hollywood a lot of opportunities and whatnot. Um, so now it'll be like, okay, he might go through his progressions that much more. He already was going through his progressions, but now he could do it even more. Um, and he also said uh, something you said from one of your videos about Hollywood's drops, how they were emphasized because of the amount that we passed the football. So it seems to hurt a lot more when he does drop passes. True. That's that's very true. Uh, because, again, it's the, the Ravens – Passing volume is low. So anything that they do, good or bad, is going to be emphasized that much more. Um, But anyway, well, our current receivers have some of the best hands coming out of college. So drops don't seem like they'll be a concern. I I hope not. I hope not. Um, So we'll see. Just wanted to know your thoughts, and I appreciate all your videos. They always help time go by faster when I'm at work or just something to tune into (laughs) when I'm bored. I appreciate it, and I, and I, I really appreciate all this honesty that's coming out in this episode of Question from Subs. Next question came from my boy Adam. He said, "What's going on, Graven? Been a long time since I wrote in. Hope you and the fam are happy and well. Yeah, we are doing really good. Uh, the other day, Greg Raman, and then he put a little picture of noodles. Uh, mentioned that Ben Powers is currently number one at left guard position. To me, that caught me off guard a little bit because personally, I figured the battle would be primarily between Tyree Phillips and Ben Cleveland, and that Powers would be the odd man out." I know Cleveland hadn't passed his physical yet at this point in time, and now he has passed it, so that's a big relief. Um, But my thoughts still remain the same. Uh, Greg Roman could have just as easily said they're waiting for someone to take the position, but no, he said Ben Powell. Oh, man. See, I'm I'm glad that I read this first because I was getting ready to say, say the same exact thing that you wrote on this next part. 
Oh, I was getting ready to say the exact same thing. Let me just read it, though. He said, a couple of years ago, I wrote in and said that I thought Jermaine Eleanor's starting narrative was just, to ruse, was just a ruse to increase his trade value. And what do you know? We traded him away before the regular season started. I don't know about you, but this Ben Powers thing is giving me the same vibe. What are your thoughts? Yes. Same page. Same page. I was just talking to some people about this. Um, I think it was in a space a couple of days ago. Well, oh, actually more than a couple of days ago. But I was saying the same exact thing. I, I've been hearing the same. Oh, yeah, Ben Powers, he's a starter. He's a starter. And I think that they're not keeping everybody. They ain't keeping everybody. And Ben Powers, he did start a little bit last year. They were doing a little rotation thing. But I, I think he is going to be traded as well. I think they just saying that exactly like you said. The whole Jermaine Eleanor thing. I remember years ago when they did that. And a lot of us, we were looking at each other like, Jermaine Eleanor going to be the starter? What? Like, whoo, mm. then they traded him away. And it, then it was like, oh, okay, we get it. Now they were just trying to prop him up so people could be looking a little extra hard to be like, okay. And then he got traded to the Patriots. And he's been doing well over there. I think he's still over there now. So shout out to him for continuing his career. Um, and he said, thanks for doing what you do, man. Be safe. And as always, go Ravens and roll tight. Smoke screen. Next question came from my boy Anthony. He said, what's up? Hope everything is well. So I've been thinking about Lamar's contract talks and how both sides say things will get done. I was a believer at first, but now I'm questioning it. The reason why is how the whole Hollywood situation turned out. The Ravens did a very good job keeping the trade hush hush and made it seem like something would get done or worked out with him. Uh, I know Lamar and Hollywood are two different people, but do you think this could be a smoke screen? Uh, I wouldn't necessarily call it a, a smoke screen. I, I just think that they they really do not want things to get ugly. They don't want things to leak, um, but they want to try to continue to give people the reassurance that, hey, this Lamar Jackson contract is going to happen. We're we going to make this thing happen. Um, whether it does, of course, is to be determined. I think it will early on this offseason. I was like, nope, not happening. Not this offseason. Not at all. Uh, but then when Lamar came out in that first presser uh, and he he started doing that public negotiating, I was like, oh. And then with his last presser, the way that he was talking, it was like, oh, OK, well, hey, it sounded like something was around the corner. Contract is around the corner. Um, so the pressure's on, though. The, the, the pressure is definitely on. Um, but I don't necessarily I wouldn't call it a, a, a smokescreen um, by the Ravens or by Lamar Jackson when it comes to the contract. Because both sides have acknowledged that they're talking. Um, it's just a matter of if it's a quality uh, conversation. Next question came from my boy, Jamin. He said, what's going on, bro? Let's play who gets the nod. Who do you think makes a bigger impact? I feel like every year the Ravens have a pleasant surprise performer on offense and defense. So who you got? James Prochet or Tylen Wallace? Um, mm, out of those two, uh, I would say Tylen Wallace. And the reason I would say Tylen Wallace was because of just his big play potential. I'm not saying that James Prochet doesn't have it. James Prochet does a really good job, especially when defenses are in a zone. He does a real good job of finding that open spot. And I know all receivers are supposed to do that, but James Prochet, I feel like he excels at that. Um, but I, I'm going to go with Tylen Wallace just because of the big play uh, potential. Um, Tyler Beatty or Justice Hill? Oh, uh, I'm going to go with Beatty because I, I feel like with Justice Hill, um, the injury situation, they do help, but it's still a lot at running back right now. Um, so I feel like Beatty, uh, has a better chance of making the roster over Justice Hill. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna go with Beatty just based off of that alone. Malik Harrison or Dalen Hayes? Ooh, that's a really good one. Oh, I'm gonna go Dalen Hayes. Um, oof, this one is close though. It's not like I feel like Dalen Hayes up here and Malik Harrison down here. No, I feel like it's like neck and neck because both of them will be provided opportunity as pass rushers. Um, and Dalen Hayes, he showed us like, hey, he got it. I'm going to go with Dalen Hayes because he is the more natural pass rusher, though. Um, you have Justin Houston. Uh, you have Tyus Bowser. And he seems to be uh, – oh, he's no, he, I don't think he's been at training camp. He's been there but not practicing yet because he's still dealing with that coming from the Achilles injury. So this is an opportunity for Dalen Hayes to really step in. Oh, and Adafi away too. You still got him as well. So that would be nice. But, yeah, I think Dalen Hayes uh, could take that next step this year if given the opportunity. Uh, Demarion Williams or Jalen Amore Davis? Oh, that's uh, – that's really a toss-up. 
That one I I, I could I couldn't tell you because it just all depends on who gets more playing time. Hopefully, they don't really eat. They neither one of them really get much playing time because that would mean the guys in front of them are healthy. Um, and if they do get playing time, hopefully it'll mean that the Ravens are blowing somebody out and they like, hey, Marlon Humphrey, hey, Marcus Peters, hey, Kyle Fuller, come to the sideline, come chill for a little bit. Um, and then finally, Isaiah Likely or Charlie Collar. I mean, it's the, the way things are starting off because Charlie Collar is out right now with his uh, sports hernia surgery. Uh, so Isaiah Likely. And you keep hearing this dude's name just about every practice. You always hear something about Isaiah Likely. He did this. He did that. He did that. He did that. You keep hearing this dude's name like every two seconds. Uh, so that's a good. And I know some people, oh, it's only training camp. Well, that's a good start. Uh, he said, thanks for the consideration. Hey, you need to do a throwback car video. <laughs> only if need be. We'll, we'll see. Uh, we appreciate you and your family and the sacrifice to bring us this content. Let's go. Hey, appreciate you, man. Thank you. Next question came from my guy, Bravo. He said, Engraving, I've been a sub for years, uh, maybe two. But anyway, never asked a question until now. But how do you feel about Hollywood Brown getting arrested for speeding? Um, and for his injury and this uh, and, and this going on, do you think it was the right move or is it still too early to tell? Um, me, I would have preferred that the Ravens kept Hollywood Brown um, just simply because they them getting rid of Hollywood have made their wide receiver group weaker um, and they didn't they didn't replace him. So but anyway, I, I, uh, I, I feel like he just he's a young guy, a lot of money. Um, and just maybe he just felt invincible. Uh, and sometimes we as people, we have to go through a growth process and a maturity process in life. Uh, we don't all learn the same. We don't all grow up the same. We don't all go through the same type of things. So I know there's a lot of people saying Hollywood this, Hollywood that. Oh, man, he, he shouldn't have been speeding. And he shouldn't have been speeding, especially if the reports are accurate that he was going like 126 and a 65. Um, so he got, he got to learn from it. He got to learn from him. I'm just I'm glad that nobody got hurt in the process. Um, him, anybody else, because that's that's some real dangerous speeds right there, man. Um, so he yeah, he got to like literally like slow down. Uh, he said, I hope for the best, but doesn't surprise me since it is Antonio Brown's cousin. See, I, I, I don't like that. I, I, I don't I feel like that's such a um, like a, a lazy analysis when it comes to Hollywood Brown, because a lot of people they 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 jump at that so quickly. Oh, it's it's Antonio Brown's cousin, so no shocker there. Like, so what what about the the good family members that Hollywood Brown has? And not even saying that Antonio Brown is a bad family member, but what about the the the, the family members that he has that are uh, looked at in, in in a better light? What about them? Like, I, I just. I don't I don't like it when people just they go straight to Antonio Brown. Oh, Antonio Brown. Oh, that's Antonio Brown's cut. Nope, no shocker there. Cuz I just feel like it's just so lazy and it's, it's just like a, a cop out like narrative almost. It just it it doesn't make any sense to me at all. They have been cousins for Hollywood Brown's entire life. Hollywood Brown does not get in trouble. Hollywood Brown does not have off the field any of that stuff. This is the his his first uh, hiccup in the NFL. This is his first hiccup in the NFL. And he was speeding. Thank goodness he ain't hurt nobody, but he gotta slow down. But to just jump straight to oh Antonio Brown, I just I, I never been a big fan of that when people do that. But anyway, uh he said your channel keeps me motivated. Don't just listen because of Ravens talk, but you're really doing something special, man. And I support every bit of it. Let's go and have a great day. Hey, shout out to you, man. I, I appreciate it, man. Um, and, and, and please do, do not feel, I hope you don't feel, because I'm, I'm not, wasn't doing that. But I hope you do not feel like I was like picking on you or anything like that. I just, you're not the only person that said it. I, I've just heard it a lot that, and, and, and it, it happens with Hollywood Brown. Obviously, because he, that's Antonio Brown's cousin. But it's happened before. Like, it's like, I've seen a lot of people where they just wait. They wait, they wait, they wait. Hollywood Brown's doing good. They're never like, oh, hey, that's A.B.'s cousin. Remember A.B. was a baller? A.B. was a baller in the league. Hey, that's his cousin over there balling too. They don't do that. But they wait. When Hollywood Brown messes up, if Hollywood Brown, like when he called out the offense, if he's slipping, then for the negative stuff, then they'll be, oh, Antonio Brown's cousin. Oh, just it's just like Antonio Brown, man. They do it for the bad, but they never do it for the good. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan, and he like the Ravens, like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You two team, keep it clean. You see my boy, he like.
Gotta made it, gotta made it. Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right and graven? Right and graven. Shout out to engraving.